హలో ఫ్రెండ్స్ వెల్కమ్ టు కాకతీయ ఐఏఎస్ అకాడమీ టుడే విల్ డిస్కస్ సమ్ ఆఫ్ ది క్వశ్చన్స్ బేస్డ్ అపాన్ టు డేస్ న్యూస్ పేపర్ ది వెరీ ఫస్ట్ క్వశ్చన్ విచ్ ద ఫాలోయింగ్ ఈజ్ ఆర్ ట్రూ విత్ రెస్పెక్ట్ టు ఇండియన్ సెక్యులరిజం దెర్ ఇస్ నో స్ట్రిక్ట్ సపరేషన్ ఆఫ్ స్టేట్ అండ్ రిలీజియన్ స్టేట్స్ నాన్ ఇంటర్ఫియరెన్స్ ఇన్ రిలీజియన్ ఈజ్ I accepted to prevent tyranny of majoritarian. Third statement, separation of religion from the state is required to protect the freedom of individuals to exit from the religion. Which of the above are true? So, in Indian constitution, the Indian form of secularism clearly states that there is no clear separation of state and religion. so article 25 as well as article 26 of the constitution that it is clear that state interferes in the religion that is state can make law which is enforced on all the religions equally to regulate all those practices which are not connected with the religion this is exactly said in article 25 of the constitution so state has every power to make a law to restrict all those practices which are not connected with the religion so that is this shows that state and religion there is no separation state can interfere states non interference in religion is accepted to prevent tyranny of majoritarian right correct separation of religion from the state is required to ensure freedom of the individual to exit from their religion and practice and accept any other religion so every individual has the freedom of conscience practice propagate their own religion so all the three statements are correct so this uh, statements they are directly taken from ncert so you can uh, go to this uh, link where you can get the page of ncert book so this question is based upon the article published in hindu paper where in the editorial column there is an uh, article headed as religion and freedom india must protect its freedom and come down heavily on the religious violence <clears throat> so recently recently us commission on international religious freedoms has categorized india as a country of particular concern right so in its annual report that it has given a very dim light of uh, religious freedoms of individuals in india so it is based upon this context this article was published and the question has been framed right so now let us move to the next question to the second question which of the following rice varieties in india were registered under geographical indications of goods and geographical indications of goods act registration and protection simply the gi act so it is which of the following rice varieties in india were registered under gi act basmati of madhya pradesh tulabanji rice of west bengal navarana rice of kerala so answer is 2 and 3 basmati rice of madhya pradesh was not accorded gi protection it has not accorded gi status do a case do a case was filed in bhopal high court it was dismissed right so only 2 and 3 are the right answer so in india nearly 12 varieties of rice have been accorded gi status another question on the same issue which of the following places are known for clay terracotta works madurai in tamil nadu murshidabad in west bengal gorakhpur in uttar pradesh chittur in andhra pradesh so all of these places they are known for clay to, uh, clay terracotta works so answer is all the above this question is based upon the article published in the hindu paper where all right gi status was given to black rice of manipur and terracotta works of gorakhpur so chakhao 
which is a black rice variety of Manipur and Gorakhpur terracotta have been back have back the geographical indication tag right so Chakhao and Gorakhpur, Gorakhpur terracotta works both these were given geographical indication status right so if you take this uh, Chakhao uh, rice which is a black rice right so it is known for its special aroma and it is normally eaten during communal fairs and is served as a kheer right and it has certain traditional uh, it has certain medicinal qualities where it is used as a traditional medicinal where it is used as a traditional medicine right so coming to uh, gorakhpur uh, terracotta works so this is a centuries old traditional art form where the potters make various animal figures like horses elephants camel goats ox with hand applied ornamentation some of the major products of craftsmanship include howda elephants mahatvadar uh, horse deer camel five faced ganesha single faced ganesha elephant tables chandeliers and hanging bells so these are the some of the works of gorakhpur clay potters right so based upon this these questions were second and third questions were framed next coming to fourth question so fourth question is based upon uh, the recent rta filed in election commission regarding the election of president of india right so coming to fourth question consider the following statements the election of the election to the office of president of india can be issued by election commission on any day within a period of 60 days before the expiry of term of office of outgoing president second statement by law the secretary general of lok sabha or the secretary general of Rajya sabha is appointed as returning officer by rotation to supervise the election of president of india right so the election to the office of president can be issued by election commission on any day within a period of 60 days before the expiry of term of office of outgoing president yes it is correct second statement by law so right it is secretary general of lok sabha or secretary general of Rajya sabha will act as returning officer so here if we observe it is not by law it is by convention there is no law specifying the secretary generals to act as returning officer it is by convention right second statement is wrong it is only first which is correct so you can refer the uh, official site of election commission eca.gov.in faqs right elections to the president right right on the same area there is another question the president shall be elected by members of electoral college consisting of elected members of both the house of parliament the elected members of legislative assemblies of state in article 54 and in article 55 state the word state includes national capital territory of delhi and union territory of pondicherry which of them is correct right so all of them all the above are correct right so this question is based upon the article published in in the paper right where an rta was filed in election commission regarding the election of regarding the electoral college for the election of president of india where the rta filed was to saw to to seek information on to, to seek information on the composition of electoral college the composition of electoral college right so where the question was raised whether the ut of jammu kashmir was included in the definition of state or not right that is what the rta where the election commission has replied that right replied 
to refer article 54 of the constitution of india so ec beg on rti asking jnk is in an electoral college so refer article 54 of the constitution it says so this is what the heading so the election commission has replied in an ambiguous way to an rti query right if ut of jammu kashmir will be a part of electoral college for the election of president of india right so this is what the query issue and uh, election commission has uh, replied to refer article 54 of the constitution where article uh, where under article 54 the president is elected by an electoral college which consists of elected members of both the house of parliament and the elected members of legislative assemblies of all the states and also of delhi ncity and puducherry ut so article 54 thus only specifically mentions ncd of delhi and puducherry as eligible to be a part of electoral college right so this is what the article 54 reads right so this is what the answer for fourth and fifth questions coming to sixth question which of the following are primary air pollutants lead sulfur dioxide ozone nitrous oxide the answer is b lead sulfur dioxide nitrous oxide right and are these are the primary pollutants these are the primary pollutants right whereas ozone ozone is an secondary pollutant so there are six primary pollutants right so out of the six primary pollutants six primary air pollutants out of the six lead sulfur dioxide and nitrous oxide so these are the primary pollutants ozone is a secondary pollutant so this issue is based upon the article published in hindi paper where it reads that 11000 fewer deaths in europe due to drop in pollution level right so the article says that right the number of deaths caused by air pollution will be dropped to will be dropped by 11000 so this right, is particularly because drop in air pollution levels caused by the coal industry the power industry or the steel industry right so this is what the article right which is right uh, which appeared in hindu paper right based upon this this question was framed so answer is 1 2 and 4 coming to seventh question seventh question is about comparison between industri uh, industrial production as well as annual survey of industries the question is on comparison between index of industrial pro uh, production and annual survey of industries right so let us go to the question which of the following statements rightly brings the difference between index of industrial production and annual survey of industries the annual survey of industry index is compiled out of much larger sample of industries compared to iip second statement while iip is a monthly indicator the annual survey of industries is a prime source of long term industrial statistics which of them is correct right so both are correct annual survey is right takes a larger picture of the industries and it takes are at year as the basis that is the asi report is given yearly whereas iip report is given a monthly basis right so both are correct so this is based upon the article published in the hindu paper where it reads that march core sector output slumps 6.5 percentage sharp contraction likely uh, likely in iip right so in the last eight years that is from 2012 to 2000 20, uh, 20, I'm sorry, from April 2012 to March 2020, the, there is highest drop in uh, industrial production, right, particularly in the financial year of 1920, right, where the drop is around minus 6.5, right. So, the core sector drops to 
6.5 percentage which is highest in the last 8 years and this 8 core sectors and this 8 core industries they form the 40 percent of the total uh, industries in the IIT. So this is the article that has been published. So these are the questions for today. I hope you have understood. Thank you.